Hey everybody, Matthew Morris here, MM Wood Studio, and it's time for another shop update. Um, I actually should have been doing a little bit more recording yesterday than I did, but I'll bring you guys up to speed on what's going on here in the shop, which is shop maintenance on my machinery. Real quick, what's this big thing here? If you didn't see my Instagram feed from a couple days ago or yesterday, whatever day it was, um, this is a two feet by four foot garden box. Um, the girlfriend, Elizabeth, um, makes these. She has a booth at the farmer's market. We have them in our backyard and we grow a lot of um, vegetables and fruits and other fun stuff here. Um, and she has this booth and she sells them and this is for clients. So she comes in here and uses the shop to make these guys cross cut them the length. Um, take the rough 4x4s and clean them up and I've made some jigs for her and then she grabs the router and chamfers the edges, a little sandpaper and they come out really nice. So this guy's kind of hogging up the shop right now which is okay because I'm in maintenance mode. So let's walk through um, some maintenance stuff on the machinery. So at the table saw, um, besides sharpening your blade and making sure that the table is square to the blade and the fence is square to the blade. Um, there's some other maintenance you can do and that's the maintenance I'm performing right now. Those are larger maintenances that I actually have on a calendar, believe it or not, and I've scheduled out throughout the year for me to check on this stuff. So I cleaned the tabletop and the entire inside of the table saw as well. The first thing I did was I got some compressed air and I took the throat plate off on the table saw and I completely um, tried to shoot, get as much of the material, you know, dust and debris and other things that are inside the saw itself dislodged and out so I could vacuum it out. And then after that, I did some lubrication on the trunnion. I used a dry lubricant on all the gears in the trunnion assembly. Now the top gets a lot of use as well and there's wood going over it and there's lots of dirt and pitch and resin and other things that gets transferred from the materials we're running over this onto the surface. So um, I've shown you this before but I use this product from Felder and I'll have a link in the, sh in the show notes for this um, and you'll be able to go online purchase it yourself as well. Um, you don't have to have a felder or hammer machine to use this. This is a great product. Basically what you do is you take it and you spray the cast iron surface or aluminum surface down. You just let it sit there for a little bit. It says not to let it sit for more than two hours. I usually let it sit for maybe 15-20 minutes. As you can see, the, get the surfaces very wet. And then once I let the product sit for a little bit, then I come in with some paper towels and wipe everything down and get all that um, dirt and debris and resin and, and so forth off of the surfaces. I'll come in with some paste wax and put some paste wax on a cloth and apply a nice coat, let that flash and then buff it out with another clean cloth. So I do that for the table saw, the band saw and the jointer um, for all the cast iron that's exposed. Now on the jointer I do something a little bit different because I have a combo machine so it's a planer as well. So I do the same thing that I walked you through here on the table saw on the surface for both the band saw and the tables on the jointer and the fence. But let me show you what I do differently on the planer portion of this. Before I actually clean the bed on the planer portion, I take off these coverings. Now for me, these parts here are covering the in-feed and the out-feed roller. So with this off, I do the same thing. I bring some compressed air over, shoot that out, and with that same um, product from Felder that I showed you guys before, I will come in here and spray the, both the out-feed and the in-feed roller, both on the top and the bottom, and let that sit for a little bit and then scrub that off. Both of them grip your wood as it's coming in and out of the planer mode. And in a regular planer, you have 
a similar setup as well with the cutter head and an in-feed and out-feed roller. And these just collect um, a ton of different resin and pitch and other things. And the cleaner they are, the smoother your planer will work. Once you clean these two thoroughly, then you can clean the planer bed uh, as well. So I'm going to close this guy up and we're going to head over to the um, mortiser and take a look at that. I pulled the mortiser out from the wall and um, with my shop vac I came over and pretty much got all the big chips collected. And what I want to do since we're looking at this is some maintenance on the mortiser. So the first thing I did was I pulled out the two stops here and I set them aside and that's where I needed them off to clean out the channels that um, the fence rides in. So I'm going to take the fence off as well. And um, I got this uh, brush here from Lee Nielsen. It's great for brushing stuff out and that's what I'm going to do with this guy. And then I'm going to brush the surface of the table clean as well. With the surface nice and clean, I'm going to now spray the cast iron. And I'm going to let this sit now for about 10 or 15 minutes. Now that this has sat for a little bit, I'm going to take a paper towel here and start wiping this down. You can see just lightly wiping how much dirt or resin or all that other fun stuff there was on the table surface. So it's really dirty. I'm going to stay away from the channel up here that the head rides up and down. Uh, this needs to be dry lubricated. Now for me right here, there seemed to be some buildup. And what I'm going to do is, what I did was I sprayed some more of the solution here. And I have one of these um, Sandflex hand blocks. And this is the fine grit. And I'm just going to take that and rub it around using that um, solution as a lubricant and it can also be done dry it doesn't have to be done wet that looks a lot better seems to be a little bit of buildup still right here so i'm going to do that again all right that looks really good i'm going to come in with some wax and just wax the table i'll make sure to get some into the channels here as well and now just wipe this down polish that or buff that wax out and you put a nice coating of uh, paste wax onto your cast iron surface don't forget to get the fence as well I sprayed this I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the fence now that I've finished the table and the fence um, it's time to take a look at the chisel. I'm going to skip the bit for now. This is a whole different video on how to sharpen these guys, but this, not too crazy. And you'll see in here I have this little case and there are two smalls and I have another case here with two big cones and these are sharpening cones. I leave these since the only thing they sharpen is my mortising chisels in the drawer with the chisels. And I'm just touching up. So with the fine, I'm just going to come in here and twirl this guy around a little bit. And then once I've done that, I should create a slight little burr around all the edges, which I have. And then over here, I have an old 8,000 grit stone. Um, it's got some chips and other things there, but it's perfect just for this task, which is to spray a little bit of water on it and take the chisel and just remove that little burr that I created from sharpening. You go around, make sure you got rid of it. And once you've got rid of it, then this, this mortising chisel is ready to go for the next time you're going to use it. Now that you know how I clean the surfaces of my machinery, hopefully that will help you in your shop as well. Anyhow, really good stuff. A um, couple more things I want to talk to you about in the shop. And number one is this Eclipse mask. Um, I was hoping to get this for Christmas, but it didn't happen. So I had to go out and buy it myself. So if you haven't seen these, Highland Woodworking's really been pushing them. 
in their emails and um, I ordered it off of Amazon so let's compare the two this guy is much larger than this one um, it's got these filters on it these round pink ones that I think most of us have gotten used to taking a look at and this guy has these really small inline purple filters um, they're both um, P100 filters so the same type of air, air filtration um, the biggest difference is that the filters are streamlined and they're inlined into the mask here versus here where they're out um, better visibility and um, the exhaust for this is straight out instead of down so sometimes when I'd be working I'd actually build up um, enough moisture in the exhaust portion of the mask that I'd have water um, for me dripping out onto either a surface um, on the table saw or a jointer or a piece of wood or something else um, especially after very long periods with this on uh, I haven't had that happen to me yet with this but I also haven't had this mask on for you know a good four or five hours straight yet either just small intervals so far um, there is a pro to this versus this and that is the strap on the bottom you um, uh, lock in the back of your neck and on this guy there is nothing like that here so the strap here on both the bottom and the top is one piece so you just got to get used to pulling them over um, overall I'm very happy that I made the switch and um, I'm not going to get rid of this or throw it away it's going to be my backup mask and I'll just put it into a cabinet somewhere in other news now you'll see some lumber behind me it just magically appeared and I have this little brass hanger here well a couple people made some um, comments some via email one on YouTube um, another one on my site somebody else uh, Matt, you know who you are, um, via FaceTime phone call, and I gave in. I'm going to um, delay the start of the dining room table, and I picked up some wenge and some walnut, and we're going to make a small little scotch cabinet. Um, I've already drawn up the plans, got them worked out on paper, get them over to SketchUp maybe one of these evenings, and it's time to start working on this guy that's the next project i hope a couple of you who have said something are happy because that's what's going to happen now i'm going to do something a little bit different here for me on this project for you guys and that is i'm going to use some s2s boards now i'm not actually going to do my joinery leaving them in the surface prepped um, view but i bought s2s walnut so that means it's been um, basically skip planes, let's be honest. It's been skip planes on both sides, and you can see the walnut. It's not rough. It's a little bit thinner than it would be rough if you had bought it in the rough. But um, that's a lot of roughs right there, one sentence. But um, I also bought quarter sawn. I, I did that for myself. I wanted really nice straight grain on the sides. Um, so two boards should get us everything we need in the cabinet except for the um, molding around the top and I picked up a board of Wenge I got lucky it wasn't a full eight feet someone had cut it for some reason and right here it has a beautiful cathedral pattern I have purchased a whole bunch of these brass hangers and I also purchased a whole bunch of the um, leather poles, knobs, whatever you want to call it, from Anthropology, um, just in case they disappear, and I will have a hardware kit, including hinges, up on the website for you guys to purchase if you want to build this as well. Um, that way you can get the leather pole in case it disappears. You can get the brass hanger that we're going to use in the back, as well as the hinges, um, all in one spot. Um, just going to be for a small little additional fee just because I had to get everything together and then plus shipping so nothing crazy I'm not looking to make a fortune or anything like that off of this just be able to provide you with all those parts in one place
that's all I have for you guys tonight for this shop update. I hope you guys had a great week in your shop as well. Even though I didn't build every, anything, I've been having a really good time getting my machines ready for building cool stuff. I got some really nice lumber for the scotch cabinet I'm going to build and uh, film, which I should have filmed the other two, but whatever. We'll film this one now. And I'm um, looking forward to hearing any comments, suggestions, questions, etc. from you guys. I um, hope you have a great week in the shop, and I'll talk to you guys soon.